So Raghuvamsha is uh, the twelfth sarga of Raghuvamsha is there for uh, Abhigya paper two, along with another text, uh, Sanskrita Rachana. Sanskrita Rachana is a simple uh, grammar text which gives a background of, uh, which uh, takes us through all the basics of grammar. So that's an easy text which you can uh, read on your own and work out on your own. This one is a more, uh, it's a Mahakavya. So we'll have all the characteristics of a Mahakavya for this. Uh, we'll start with the Mangla Shloka. Vagarthaviva Samprakto Vagartha Pratipatte Jagata Fitaro Vande Parvati Parameshwaro. Um, Kalidasa has written this work, which is uh, uh, about 18 sargas are there. Uh, it deals with Raghoho Vamsha, Raghu's uh, Vamsham. Uh, Raghu is one of the kings of the uh, Surya Vamsha. Uh, there is an Ikshvaku, so it is also called Ikshvaku Vamsha. It is called Surya Vamsha. Uh, many of the kings are called Kakutsthaha. You will find these words in 12th Sarga coming up often also. So there was another king called uh, uh, Kakutsthaha and his Vamshe Jataha iti Kakutsthaha. Raghuhu iti Kaschana Raja asite. Tasya Vamshe Jataha iti Karanate. Raghu Vamshi Yaha. So this text as such, it is uh, because he focuses on Raghu's uh, uh, actions. He starts off with the birth of Raghu's uh, uh, Raghu. Uh, he, he, uh, Kalidasa has named this work as Raghu Vamsha. He starts with how Raghu's father, Dilipa, uh, is without a child and uh, then he goes to Vasishta and finds out that he had insulted uh, or he had not uh, um, seen Kamadhenu as he was coming down and then he goes, serves his, her daughter for a long time. Then he is blessed with a child and that child is Raghu. So this is where our Raghuvamsha starts off. These are covered until the, say, sixth Sarga. The first six sargas are that. Then you have Raghu's son, Aja, and then Dasharatha. By the time we come to the twelfth sarga, it's uh, um, the Balyavastha and the marriage of Rama is all over. And we start off with the twelfth sarga from when uh, Dasharatha decides to coronate Rama. So that is where, uh, which is in the Ayodhya Kanda. Right? That's where it starts off. Yeah. Ayodhya Kanda, ma? Ama. Uh, it spans over all the rest of the kandas in just one sarga of totally 105 shlokas till the end of the war and then he comes back. So until then, you uh, this 12th sarga covers all of those. So as usual, Chittur text has the um, Anvaya and Pratipadartha. One minute, let me share that text. So the Chittur Sabha has uh, uh, given a, uh, they have published a text which has, uh, generally it only has the Anvaya Artha, Pratipada Artha, there is a Bhavartha also in it. Only these three sections are there for each shloka uh, in, the, uh, in the text that Chittur has given, okay. But what I have included, what my uh, student has also given is this. So uh, one of my students, and actually it is a, many of them have contributed to this. And we, so we have a little bit of the Alankara. There is the Thakparyam in a simpler manner uh, than the Bhavartha. The Bhavartha can be just using the words that are there in the Shloka itself. So this Thakparyam may be a more approachable way to understand the whole Shloka in a very simple manner. And Vigraha Vakyani. For Chittur Abhigna level, this entire section or Alankara and the Vigraha Vakyani is not necessary. But it is good to know these things um, because it will help. Okay. So let me just resize this. Does the Twelfth Sarga also include the Uttarakandam or no? It is skipped. Over. No Uttarakandam. Okay. No, it doesn't have Uttarakandam. It just stops with... Uh, it just stops 13th with... Thirteenth uh, Sarga will it Starts go? with the Uttarakandam. Ama. Yes. So in this text, as I told you, you will need only until 
the bhavartha for the exam or the preparation and everything you will need the padacheda uh, anvaya etc some sandhi karyam yes so the padacheda will be very useful for sandhi uh, identification which is there in the exam so uh, we will read the text we will uh, uh, go through the text first before we get into all the exam point of view things okay um and the way it is marked the highlights that i have done is anything that is in yellow so the whole shloka will be asked for pratibadartha anvaya and tatparyam where you can write how much ever you know how much ever you can identify and you can write that the one in the pink part which is just a small short portion of the entire shloka that will be asked for sasandarbham uh, uh, you will have to name the context you will have to give the bhavartha there and try to uh, uh, place it in the context of the entire work uh, who has said to whom these sort of uh, uh, this thing and all i will i will give you the template for all this at the end of the uh, work as such after we finish the 12th sarga now we'll get into the text so this is as far as the text formatting is concerned okay now this is the first time we are reading a kavyam in the chittur series the last time we read a kavyam was ramakatha which is ramodantam which is more in the style of an itihasa it is in the style of ramayanam it just is a, a condensed uh, a version written in his own words that sort of a work it was ramodantam which we read it for the first level now the second level is where you are introduced into a real life kavyam kind of thing you know the original kavyam as such without any abridged versions or anything so what is a kavyam kavyam is not only the padyam padyam is verses kavyam is any body of literature is called kavyam anything that has come from the pratibha from the creative shakti of a poet is called kavyam so it can be in the form of prose it can be in the form of a poetry or a drama or a mixture of both so you can have any kind of literature is called a kavyam uh, usually they try to give the separation of shravya kavyam and drishya kavyam as two separations two categories for kavyams wherein shravyam is something that is heard and drishyam is something that is seen uh, the lines can blur a bit because even the drishya kavyams sorry even the shravya kavyams Uh, that is which have to be heard like padyam even these uh, mahakavyam and everything can actually be portrayed in a very beautiful manner and it can be uh, pleasing to the eye too right but you can write a script based on that and it should be in a presentable format in a rupaka format for it to be uh, uh, staged no, it cannot be staged as such with only verses so you need a little bit of dialogue also for it to be stageable you can take the idea from a kavyam and make it stageable make it into drishyam that's the only uh, difference that you can uh, say but otherwise as is when you read a mahakavyam with the lot of verses it is only shravyam it's only beautiful to listen to or you can Uh, it's not a stage worthy thing with just two people reciting verses one after the other it will not be appealing to the audience so that is why we categorize padyam or mahakavyam as a shravya kavyam raghuvamsha forms uh, 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 one of the it becomes one of the five mahakavyas Uh, in the literary world sanskrit literary world with, so kalidasa has the uh, uh, honor of having two of his kavyams into that entry one is kumara sambhava and Ka- raghuvamsha we read it in bodhini uh, that these two are the mahakavyams and then you have kiratarjuniyam naishadhiyam and shashupalavadha uh, which are all which form the other three of the pancha mahakavyas in this we are reading only the 12th sarga The twelfth sarga starts with this shloka: Nirvishta vishayasneha sa dasantam upeyivan asid asanna nirvana ha pradiparchihi iva ushasi. So nirvishta vishayasneha ha saha. It all the the sarga itself starts with saha. We don't have dasharata here. 
Saha. So he'll have to go back to the 11th Sarga to find out who, where he mentioned. And then, there, then only we know the trend of who this Saha is. Yeah, we can't suddenly say, oh, Saha, Ramaha, Prayaha, because it is Raghuvamsha or it is Raghuhu, if we are suddenly thrust into it. right? So we have to have some context of what happened before in the 11th Sarga end for us to know this. So by the end of the 11th Sarga, they are returning from uh, Ayodhya. They have this encounter with Bhargava Rama, uh, Parashurama. After that, they come back to Ayodhya. Uh, the incident of Shravana Kumara happens before that. And uh, that also gets a mention here. After they come back to Ayodhya, he is describing the avastha of Dasharatha at this point. To, to give way, to show that he feels, okay, Rama has to be coronated. You know, every parent, when he understands that, okay, I'm getting old, I'll have to give up that responsibility. It's not very easy for a parent to do that, to understand his avastha and give the reins to a son. right? But Dasharatha understood his uh, uh, state and then he was prepared to give up the reins or at least coronate him as a Yubaraja at this point. So how was he? That's what is described in the shloka. Saha uh, dashantam upeivan asana nirvanaha asit pradiparchihi iva. So every, everything that is there in Prathama Vibhakti is an adjective to saha. Saha dasharathaha uh, nirvishta vishayasneha. First of all, for you to feel that you, you have to give up the reins, you should have finished enjoying everything. You should not have any asha there because asha will just pull you inside and it will uh, uh, it's very tough to cross that nadi vairagya you know? he says asha nama nadi manoratha jala trishna taranga kula raga grahavati vitarka vihaga dhairya drumat dvamsini it can even destroy dhairyam which is like a, it's a beautiful imagery of how asha is a nadi it's like a river flowing apdi and karaborandu odradum or nadi adavad it's just uh, uh, destroying the sides the banks and the trees and everything and keeps running yasya paragata vishuddha manasaha nandanti yogeshwaraha for someone to cross such a huge river of nadi it is only a yogi who can cross that Asha and say, okay, I am done with Asha. And, you know, say, sit back and say, okay, I have enjoyed whatever I have enjoyed. Dasharatha is in that sort of a state. So, nirvishta vishaya snehaha. Vishayaha. All the different vishayas that he enjoy, you can enjoy, which is shabda, rupa, rasa, gandha, sparsha, shabda. These are the five vishayas that are enjoyed by the indriya by the organs, sense organs, right? So that vishayaha eva snehaha atra. Snehaha snihyati. That which attaches you, that which pulls you in, uh, 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 attracts you. So that vishaya is a sneham. Sneham na and the pishi It's like a stickiness. Uh, so snehaha also means oil. We are going to come to that when it indicates the oil also. So first we will see how all of these apply to Dasharatha and then we will go on to the comparison here. So Dasharatha is a person who sneham, whose attraction uh, uh, in the form of rupam, form, rasa, taste, gandha, smell, uh, rupa, rasa, gandha, sparsha, touch, and then shabdam. These are all the things that you want to do, right, in life. Everything that attracts your sense organs are the vishayas. That sneham or that attraction in the form of these experiences are nirvishtaha. Nirvishta is completely gone. Upabhuktam. Nirvishtaha ityasya padar so nirvishta is completely fully enjoyed in artho nir is the upasarga there vishadhatu nirvishati nivishati is entering 
ீட்டிங் Huh? so he is completely the the sneham that he feels for uh, uh, the sneham that is there in the form of all these vishayas is completely gone out of him because uh, the anubavichu kalachu ponadun irukum take i edut abidum you know you will just uh, sit back and say okay i am done with all this tadrisha mano bhavah tasya aasit dasharathasya tari nirvishta vishaya sneha sah dasharathah kidrasha asit dashantam upeyivan he was he had attained the end of his dasha dasha dashaha tu chatasraha santi shaishavam kaumaram yavvanam vardhakyam so there are four kinds of uh, stages in life and in those stages dashanam antaha dasha antaha uh, um, the the last portion of that dasha is vardhakyam so dashantam vardhakyam upeyivan upeyivan is praptavan he had attained this upeyivan is also upa is the upasarga in dhatu there is a different pratyaya here it is not praptavan like the kvatu pratyaya it is something like kvasun pratyaya or something kvasu is the pratyaya here so it is a sakaranta shabda upeyivas is the शब्दा ही अर्थ प्रातिपदिकम सो उपेयिवान श्रेयां श्रेयां सो श्रेयां सह तथा उपेयिवान उपेयिवाम सो उपेयिवाम सह यू कैन ना सो दिस इज लाइक द लाइक प्राप्तवान लिटरली दैट्स द मीनिंग देर सो दशांतम उपेयिवान द वन हु हैड आल्सो अटेंड द एंड ऑफ हिस दशा द फोर दशास दैट आर देर इन अ लाइफ एंड � he is also a person who is close to extinguishing nirvana na uh, uh, the light is going to go off almost there so asanna nirvana asanna is samipa uh, uh, very close uh, so uh, uh, he is he is close to going off completely asanna nirvana aasit katham aasit ushasi pradeeparchihi iva aasit so here if you look at the anvaya nirvishta vishaya sneha dashantam upeyivan saha dasharathah ushasi pradeeparchihi iva asanna nirvanah aasit ushasi ushakkale is the pratah kale not in the morning but in the dawn ushas is more like the dawn during the dawn time when the sun is going to break it's still not out yet at that time ushasi pradeepa archihi pradeepasya archihi jwala yatha bhavati tatha dasharatah abhi asti what does this mean here ushah kale so during the entire night there is a lamp that you have lit and that lamp uh, has a basin with oil there is also a wick in it and it is burning now the entire oil is gone nirvishta vishaye snehah nirvishtah vishayah tu patram atra pradeepasya patre vishayah tu snehah nasti there is no oil inside that patram for a pradeepam which has been burning all through the night imagine 8 hours there is a huge lamp that is there you have also poured oil and that is completely come down now so nirvishta vishaya snehah dashayah antam upeyivan that archihi the the flame has gone to the end of the wick dasha is the thread that you put inside which is the wick it has gone to its end dashayah antam iti pradeepa archihi iti chete tatra dashayah antam iti ekavachane vaktavyam parantu dasharathasya pakshe you say dashanam antah so the end of all the four stages abdin eduthuk so dashantam upeyivan this archihi this jwala had gone to the end of the wick dashantam upeyivan asanna nirvanah it will extinguish at any moment 
தாதிரிஷ பிரதீப அர்ச்சி இவ லைக் த ஃப்ளேம் ஆஃப் சச் பியூட்டிஃபுல் லேம்ப் தசரத வாஸ் ஸ்டே ஓகே சோ ஹி ஹேட் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ்ட் ஆல் ஆஃப் த விஷயாஸ் and then he was at vardhakya avastha he was dashantam upeevan he had attained his end he was also going to uh, die so asanna nirvana moksha roopa uh, uh, you know moksham will also uh, de, uh, na, yogenante tanutyaja in the first sarga you will see shaishave abhyastha vidyanam yovvane vishayeshinam vardhake munivrittinam yogenante tanutyaja this is the rule of every ikshvaku king all of the king in the surya vamsha they will enjoy their uh, uh, things in yavvanam and then when they are in their old age they will go live like a muni vardhak vardhake muni vrittinam yogena ante tanutyajam they will let go of their own body using yoga so he was also close to that last stage so he wanted to rest and give the reins to uh, rama he was like a pradeepa archihi the beauty here is to compare dasharatha with the pradeepa archihi the sun is going to rise next so the sun is rama here he is going to be much brighter than the small lamp that is dasharatha so he has to give way for that uh, sun to rise later so that is your dhvani here more like you know to compare him with uh, a pradeepa archi which has been burning through the night next so the surya is going to come out huh? sun mahodi son ah uh, son <laughs> the the sun in the form of son <laughs> yeah. so punaha so you are saying that um, dasharatha's flickering life is like the flickering flame of that lamp that has glowed through the night yeah. and towards the morning hours it's flickering and it's almost ex- about to be extinguished by the wind Mm. Uh, so nirvana have va to blow right so it's, it's about to be blown yes. out mm. so what we blown out the lamp of his life is about to be blown out and uh, then the vishaya sneha so dasha you said was the wick wick right? yes uh, so yes. the second meaning of dasha is the wick so dashantam upeevan iti uh, okay so it goes with both dasharatha as well as the lamp so Let's each say, of those adjectives go for both saha and for pradiparchi pradiparchi aha uh-huh. Uh-huh, but so uh, because there is a slesha there hmm. it is a slishtopama oh slishtopama uh, and uh, sneha you said was oil as well as uh, his raga right? bhogam ha ah, raga yes raga and uh, nirvishtah okay fine uh, vishaya means vishaya is bhajanam and rupa rasagandha sparsha uh, shabda விஷய எனி விஷயம் ரைட் எனி வஸ்து சோ பாஜனம் ஹியர் யூ கேன் டேக் இட் ஆஸ் த லேம்போட அந்த பாத்திரம் சொல்றோம் இல்லையா பாத்திரம் வேதிக்கல வந்து Yeah. Oh, okay. See, Kalidasa is very clever there. <laughs> we shouldn't doubt. We may be not so knowledgeable. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He is correct. That's so, his uh-huh. uh, strength. And the uh-huh. Linga Samyam is his strength, you will find. Very rarely he will deviate from that Linga Samyam. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. By any chance, are all the Upamas in pink? Or no, it's just in this question. Oh, ille, the, ha, so I said that the pink ones are for ERC. Uh, if I mention ERC, please don't wonder what it is. It is Asandarbham uh, uh, Bhavartham Lekhaniyam Tatra. Yeah, well. So anything that is pink, only that portion will be asked. Okay, so you should be able to identify that, uh, not for okay, Upama. Got okay, no. got it. Yeah. No. 
பிரதிபார்ச்சி So it depends on how you write and what sort of a question you are answering. Okay. That uh, question paper will come to you. Now, you can enjoy it. You can talk about the question paper. So, with respect to Upama, just in Bhavartam, we can write like Yatha, so and so, Tatha, so and so. Do you think? See, when you read the Bhavartam here, I'll go over the Artha and the Bhavartha also. Just to, you know, it's a little tough ex- the words there. So, I'll just go over. Uh, and then you'll understand. Okay? Yeah. So, Nirvishta Vishaya Sneha Ha Vishaya Bhogana Upabhuktavan. It's, it's just, now you'll understand very easily. He, one who has understood, one who has uh, enjoyed all of the Vishaya Bhogas, the, the, the enjoyments that need to be enjoyed by the different uh, uh, Indriyas. Saha Dasharataha Dashantam Jeevana Avasthaya Ha Antimam Bhagam Vardhak Vardhakam Yeah, both are correct. Vardhakam upeyivan praptavan ushasi prabhata samaye pradiparchihi iva deepajwala iva asanna nirvanaha asanna moksha kalaha very decently marana kalaha iti nauktam moksha kalaha iti uktam atra. So nirvana is actually the enlightenment and the Buddhist terminology is also the same. So asit abhavat. Dasharathaha nana vidhan vishaya upabhogan anubhuya. After enjoying all of the different kinds of uh, objects of the world, uh, objects of enjoyment, Vardhake in his old age, Nirvana unmukha deepa jwala iva prashantikamaha asit. He was prashantikamaha. He wanted peace like a, a deepa jwala which is nirvana unmukha, which is uh, leaning towards extinguishment. So it will become quiet then. And the when, when it is going off, there will be a spluttering madri irko. You know, there will also be a sound. It's not so calm. It actually wants to become calm at that time. And the kadasil, there will be some over uh, uh, sound and everything for that lamp. And then it is, uh, it wants to be very calm at that point of time. Inge Vande, he has not given all the slesha meanings here. But if you look at Malinatha Vyakyanam or any other Vyakyanam, Narayana Pandita's Vyakyanam, you will find the meaning of uh, Dasha and uh, Vishaya and Sneha and everything there. So why? Uh, it's because it is only the second level. They've not gone into so much of detail at this level. I just do it for enjoyment. That's all. Okay. So we can go on to the next shloka. Nirvishta Vishaya Sneha. ச தசாந்தம் உபேயிவான் ஆசீத் ஆசன்ன நிர்வாணா பிரதீபார்ச்சி ரிவோஷசி இஃப் யூ கேன் மெமரைஸ் இட் கொசுஷ்ச இதி சூத்திரம் 32107 கொசுஷ்ச இதி லிடர்தி ஛ந்தசி ஆகச்சதி சோ இட்ஸ் இட் ஆஃப் கோர்ஸ் இட்ஸ் இட் பிகம்ஸ் எ பிராதிபதிக அண்ட் இட்ஸ் டிக்ளைன் லைக் நவுன்ஸ் சுபந்தமேவ சுபந்தமேவ தத்ர சோ வர்தந்து தத்ர கர்மபதம் பிராப்னோதி தசாந்த தசாந்தம் இதி கர்மபதம் உபேயிவான் இதி வார்தகம் இட் ஹாஸ் தீனிங் ஆஃப் தவத்து இஃப் யூ ஆர் இன்ட்ரெஸ்டட் யூ ஷுட் லுக் அட் அஷ்டாத்யாயி சேனல் வேர் நீலேஷ் டீல்ஸ் வித் ஆல் த சூத்ராஸ் தட் ஆர் அசோசியேட்டட் வித் தீஸ் வேர்ட்ஸ் ஷுட் கோ ஓவர் தட் ஃபார் டுவெல்த் சர்கா ஹி ஜஸ்ட் ப்ரிப்பேர்ட் ஒன் செட் ஆஃப் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் ஃபார் திஸ் திங் சித்தூர் சோ யூ கேன் கோ ஓவர் தோஸ் லெசன்ஸ் 
அதுல எல்லா சூத்திரமும் வரும் உங்களுக்கு யூ பி ஹாப்பி நெக்ஸ்ட் ஒன் தம் கருணாமூலம் ஆகத்திய ராமேஸ்வீர் நியசியதாம் இது கைகேயி சங்கையேவாக பலித சத்மனா ஜரா பியூட்டிஃபுல் ஸ்லோகம் அதாவது த வே வார்த்தக்கியம் கம்ஸ் இன் சி ஹி இஸ் ஹி இஸ் அட் இஸ் தசாந்தம் தசாந்தம்னா ஹவு டஸ் இட் மேனிஃபெஸ்ட் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் வார்த்தக்கியம் த பிசிக்கல் மேனிஃபெஸ்டேஷன் ஆஃப் வார்த்தக்கியம் இஸ் கர்ணமூலம் யூஸ்வலி எவ்ரிபடி கெட்ஸ் ஒயிட் ஹேர் அட் த பேஸ் ஆஃப் த இயர் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் so it is as if this jara has taken a form of that palita chadma palitam palitam with the white hair so it takes the form of white hair and then it comes to his ear and says rahasyam rame shrihi nyasyatam you have to keep place the responsibility of shrihi of this rajya lakshmi with rama iti karnamoolam agatya she comes it's as if she comes to his ear and if you want to say a rahasyam you always uh, you know tell it near yeah, the ear whisper mari whisper ah, whisper madri ade so there is always a whisper of white hair that comes near the ear before anywhere else that is the tell tale sign that you are entering into vardhakyam so it seems as if she comes there in the form of palitam why does she do that why does she take on a disguise chadma here is disguise so she takes on the disguise of palitam white hair and comes and tells him uh, uh, in his ear kaikeyi shankaya iva as if she is afraid that the moment kaikeyi hears of this she is going to uh, stop all the uh, you know the arrangements at least let the arrangements happen right so she came and told him in rahasyam there as if she was afraid that kaikeyi would destroy the whole thing so kaikeyi shankaya iva as if afraid of kaikeyi she came and told tam karnamoolam agatya tam ah so palit jara the the way the arrangement anvaya goes here is jara tam ah that is the main sentence so jara old age uh, jara is vardhakyam he didn't take vardhakyam he didn't take dashantaha none of those words he wanted to bring in the strilinga padam here because when the co wife you know she is the preeti uh, she is the vallabha here kaike is the most lo- loved wife of dasharatha and if there is another woman involved Uh, uh, then she will get upset she will get angry about it so she had to come in the disguise le ajaram garde he is using the strilinga padam to bring in the idea of jealousy between two women who have who want the attention of the raja here so kaikeyi shankaya iva jara old age tam aha tam dasharatham aha it came and told dasharatha what did he tell rame shrihi nyasyatam iti rame in rama that is ramabhadre ramachandre uh, uh, in uh, at his responsible this thing ah enna solradhu raman idathil na alaga undurradhu so rame shrihi nyasyatam you will have to place the bharam of rajya bharam uh, with rama iti karnamoolam agatya she comes to the base of his ear and uh, tells him why does she do that how does she come palita chadmana chadma in the form of in the disguise of vyajam chadma iti chet vyajena uh, in the disguise of palitam uh, white hair uh, she comes there because she is afraid of kaikeyi so this kaikeyi shankaya is a uh, it's not the correct hetu it is a very swabhavikam thing that happens but that hetu the reason for her to take on the disguise of white hair is being fancied by the poet and he says oh she must be afraid of kaike jara is no nobody jara does not wait for anybody or is not afraid of anybody vyagriva tishtati jara paritarjayanti la this is solla mudiyala la the beauty of this shloka oh my god how ஒரு 
Mm. The white hair comes in the ear and that's a mm. mark of advanced old age. Mm. Uh, I mean, that observation itself as a fact, you know, Thank you. mind boggling, huh? <laughs> that uh-huh. sort of a reference. Uh-huh. Observation of like, you know, how, how do you know you're really old? Okay. Okay. The hair in your ears is, uh, is, is, is white. It's amazing. Uh, the, the first time I took one photograph and mm-hmm. I actually was taking a photograph of my mukutti, my nose ring. <laughs> okay. And I had to do that. I had friends come to me. The first thing they said was, Palita Chadmana Jarawa. Because my <laughs> the hair near my ears was starting to show white hair. So <laughs> it's an amazing observation that he's uh, brought out in the shloka. Okay, the other thing that strikes me is uh, Palita Chadmana Jara would happen at... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sunday for him, it's some thousands of years later. For even at 30, we will have Palita Chadma, yeah. Palitam. <laughs> so the, the fact that she whispers in his ear, Kaikeyi Shanka Kimartam Nama, she's afraid that the suggestion of hers, that Rama should be the one who gets the Shri, uh, Yes. would be objected to by KKE. That's, yeah. I think that's also one aspect of it. The second aspect which you said was that she is uh, she is also a lady and Jara is also a lady. That's it. another aspect of it. I, I, this, I think this, the story bears out the fact that she becomes jealous of the fact that Bharata doesn't get it. Yeah. So she's yeah. suspecting that. She kind of comes and whispers in his ear. Kaikei, Shankai, it's like, no, it brings out Kaikei's, uh, the Kaikei's personality is already brought out here. Already uh-huh. brought out. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Kaikei, so Kaikei. that is the advantage and the difference between an Itihasa and a Kavya. So mm-hmm. in an Itihasa, you are not going to uh, forewarn the audience about uh-huh. how the behavior of the person or the character is going to be. Whereas in a Kavya, the playground is such that you can forewarn the audience about this because you know the story beforehand you want to give that beauty there with all this yes this is that so kaikeyi shankaya eva even in kumara sambhavam the same thing he does right pataga eva vivikshuhu Pataga eva iti manmataha eta agachati like, like, uh, like a moth towards correct. the flame. Uh, <laughs> correct, correct. Uh-huh. Yeah, one who wants to enter, like a moth which wants to enter into the flame. Yeah. Jwala unmukaha eva sahasa sthanum dadarsha Yeah. So, so atra kaikei shankaya eva iti uh, atra ru, rupakam natu upama. Kala, that eva is going with. Uh, it's a, ha, no, it, eva uh, is not upama here, it is upama. Utpreksha. 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 Ah, utpreksha. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, you, you'll have to do it as who hetu preksha. The hetu, what does he give hetu yeah, here? Uh, ha, ha, ha. Huh. Okay. So hetu utpreksha. Uh, jara agatya aha. Karnamulam agatya aha. Iti, that is your main sentence. Now, what is the reason he gives for jara to come to the ear and say, he says, kaikei shankaya iva uh, karnamulam agatya. Iti. It is as if Jara is afraid of Kaikeyi. And so she came to the ear to whisper. So the reason of giving Kaikeyi Shanka is not a real reason. That's what I was trying to, I started off with that. Jara is not a person to be afraid of anybody. Vairagya Shatakatla, he says, Vyagri Iva Tishtati Jara. Jara is standing like a female tiger which is about to pounce on you. You don't know when Jara is going to come to you. Old age is going to attack you. So it's, it is an attacking person. But for it to be afraid of Kaikeyi, it is a Hetu that the poet is fancying here based on the context. Yeah. So because the fa- uh, Hetu is not a real Hetu, and the Hetu is being fancied. Kaikeyi Shankaya Iva. Idandu, try to think it in your language and see. You will understand that fancy uh, uh, versus Upama. That is Kaikeyi Ita Bayapta Madri Panna Avdingra. Bayapta, it is not a comparison here. It is not a direct comparison. It is more like you are trying to imagine that this could be the reason. When it is not the reason. So that is a, an Utpreksha Alankara. Where the Hetu is fancy. Hetu is in Tritiya here, Shankaya it Tritiya. 
கொஞ்சம் <laughs> <laughs> கொஞ்சம் <laughs> so that is what don't need to get into so much of detail this is in the fourth level la paathukalam ama so tam karna moolam now i'll go over the artha here pratipada artha jara vardhakya avastha kaikeyi shankaya iva kaikeyi shankaya iva ityeva uktam tatra so as if she is uh, you can say kaikeyaha samshiti athava sandeha vartate kaikeyi nirakaroti iti sandehena you can probably write it like that palita chadmana shukla kesha vyajena palitam na palitam galitam mundam palitam edo ormela angam galitam palitam mundam dashana vihinam jatam tunda adalavaru its moha mudgara adalavaru கர்ணமூலம் ஆகத்திய கர்ண சமீபம் ஆகத்திய கர்ண மூலம் இஸ் பேஸ் ஆஃப் த இயர் சோ க்ளோஸ் டு த இயர் சோ ராமே ராமபத்ரே ஸ்ரீஹி ராஜ்யலட்சுமிஹி நியசியதாம் நியசியதாம் நீ உபசர்க அசு தாத்து திஸ் இஸ் இன் கர்மணி பிரயோக சோ நியசியதாம் நிதியதாம் ஸ்தாப்பியதாம் இவம் தம் தசரதம் ஆஹ இவ it uh, i would put th- no i don't think we need a uh, aha iva is also correct because he ha so kaikeyi shankaye vaha the iva can go with both kaikeyi shankaya and it can go with aha also jara old age it, it, this is a personification of jara old age cannot take a form and come and speak it is as if she spoke so there is a hetu utpreksha and the kriya utpreksha here the kriya is also being uh, fancied here it is as if she is speaking she is not literally opening her mouth and saying ramesh vihin yasyadam it is a sakshatna vadati okay so aha iva it was as if she said that okay is that clear vriddhavastha shukla kesha vyajena கைகேயி சங்கையா தசரத்திய கர்ணாந்திகம் உபேத்திய சேம் மீனிங் தட்ஸ் வாட் தேவ் டேக்கன் ஹியர் சோ யூல் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் இட் வெரி கிளிக்லி அந்திகம் இது சமீபம் விருத்தாவஸ்தா ஜரா சுக்லகேஷ வியாஜேன in the form of or in the disguise of in the under the pretext of white hair kaikeyi shankaya as if she is afraid of kaikeyi dasharatasya karnasya antikam near his ear upetya after approaching there rame rajyam nidhiyatam iti rahasyam uvacha iva it was as if she spoke a secret to him arthat vriddhah dasharatah ராமசிய எவ்வராஜாபிஷேகாய அச்சிந்தயத் இது பாவா சோ வாட் டஸ் திஸ் ஹோல் திங் மீன் இட் மீன்ஸ் ஓகே ஐ தசரதா தாட் தட் ஹி ஹேட் டு கிவ் த ரெஸ்பான்சிபிலிட்டி ஆஃப் திஸ் யுவராஜா இன் டு ராமா இன் சிம்பிள் ஃபார்ம் அப்படியே வந்து ஒரு பெரிய காவியத்தை படிச்சுட்டு சப்பன் இருக்கிற மாதிரி இருக்கும் அச்சிந்தயத்தி Uh, sorry enak yeah. vandu hetu what is the hetu here uh ah, what is the reason for her to come close to the ear reason for her to come ah. which is kaikeyi shanka okay so what to wish for in the ear why can't she just announce it on the loudspeaker she kaikeyi ketru allo enamo okay itte vandu solrudhu why should be satu sapatni eva kalu she is the co wife annala vandu apdi it's just a... imagination no, no, part of it was okay got yeah okay ha we'll 
do the next one next class sir yeah so i will just go over the pratipadartha and bhavartham the rest i think you can work out if you have any doubts you can ask me vigraha vakyam and everything it should be pretty straight forward since you have this entire section here i will upload this uh, in the drive you can take a look okay ready so when there are two alankaras like hetu utpreksha and kriya utpreksha is there so you will have to determine whether those two alankaras depend on each other or not or they are separate from each other if they are separate from each other then it is called a samsrishti alankara where you say it is a tila tandula nyayam tila is sesame seeds and tandulam is rice you can separate the two because one is black and the other is white we are not talking about uh, uh, the one without the uh, chilka you know one without the skin it is with the skin the olden type of black sesame seeds so you can easily distinguish the two alankaras so kaikeyi shankaya iva kar- karnamoolam agatya you can connect that to karnamoolam and say uh, karnamoolam agatya aha iva it was as if she spoke so the kriya utpreksha can separately exist from the hetu utpreksha so this here is samsrishti if you say they both exist together if any two alankaras it need not be just one variety i can have an upama and an utpreksha i can have rupakam and a, a vibhavana some any two types but if they are codependent and enala if i am not able to separate it and say like how i said now then it is called a sankara where one alankara depends on the alan- another alankara for its explanation stopama slishtopama is sankara yes the one that we had in the first shloka the slesha here uh, is needed to explain the upama pradiparchihi eva ushasi so that is why we call it as slishta upama wherein the slesha is the angam and upama is the angi angi is pradhanam the pradhana upama pradhana alankaram is upama and slesha helps this upama to be more highlighted and more beautiful so the slesha alankara becomes an anga for upama so there it is called anga angi bhava sankara there can be sankara of two alankaras where you don't understand which one is better which one is the angam which one is the angi then it is a sandeha sankara we can't determine which is the pradhana adanga okay so this is the main difference between the combination of alankaras in one shloka okay